two, camera two, wide shot. Right there. See that? Okay. And five. Good evening, Somerville. I'm Kai, and you're watching a live election night broadcast from the Somerville Media Center. I'm Benjamin. Tonight we have a hi historic election happening in Somerville. Joe Curtitone has been mayor for 18 years, and this is the first election he has not been on the ballot for mayor in Somerville. To give you some context, that's longer than I've been alive, and I'm old enough to host a news broadcast. I'm Sebastian. Let's look at who we have on the ballot in Somerville. On Tuesday, September 14th, we had a pre preliminary election in Somerville. Some people, th some people think we had a primary, but that's an election between two political parties. Primaries happen in state and national elections, but not in city elections. In the preliminary election, there are more than two people running for the same job. In September of this year, we had four people running for office. In that election, Billy Taro came in fourth place. Mary Cassesso came in third place. Katiana Ballantin came in second. And Will Ma came in first. We don't say he won because being first and second place means you go to the final election. That final election is being held tonight. That means on the ballot tonight for mayor are Willem Ba and Katiana Valentine. Both are city councilors and, Im and immigrants, both to Somerville and the U.S. Polls close at 8 p.m. tonight. Next, we're going to run through the candidates running for city councilor citywide in Somerville. The city council is a board of 11 people who help decide issues at City Hall. <clears throat> Their biggest job is is in approving the city budget and spending that the mayor wants. In their job, they decide how much money is spent on schools and how much money is spent on roads, and how much money is spent on fire departments. There are four councillors who represent the entire city. They are called at-large councillors. Then there are seven councillors who represent different parts of the city. The city is div div divided up into seven wards. So, so those people are called ward councillors. Running for at-large councilor are Kristen Shrizo, Lily Burnley Jr., um, Virginia Hussey, um, Charlotte Kelly, um, Justin Kakoda, Tracy Lee, Evan Setnick, and Kate Wilson. Of the eight candidates, there are four who will become councilors at large. The only one of the eight candidates who, who has been a councillor before is Kristen Srezzo, who was appointed to the board in March 2020 when another councillor stepped down. That means this would be the first time Kristen Srezzo was elected to the board, too. Um, who is running for a ward councillor? Some of those divided into seven pieces called wards, and one person represents each ward. In Ward 1, that's East Somerville, Mill McLaughlin is running for council. He's the council president and doesn't, doesn't have an opponent, so he'll uh, probably win. Ward 2 has in in incumbent councillor um, um, J.T. Scott running against um, Stefanson Ammon, who is running for office for the first time. Ward 3, Ben Ewan Campen is running again for office. He has no opponent. He will probably win. Do you know that on some ward maps of Somerville, this sit, this building sits right on the split between Ward 2 and Ward 3? In fact, this very room is the dividing line. Ward 4, Jesse Klingen, Klingen, Klingen is the only person on the ballot for counselor. He's probably going to win. In Ward 5, Tessa Bridge is running against Beatriz, Beatriz Gomez. They were the finalists in the September pr pr preliminary election, which, which also had Todd Easton coming in first. Ward 6, Lan Lance Davis is running unopposed. He has no one running against him. He'll probably win. In Ward 7, Becca Miller is running against Judy Panita Newfield. They were first and second place finishers in the preliminary election. The third place finisher was Alex Anderson. Let's go to a quick commercial. Da, 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 da. Create and capture holiday memories that last you a lifetime. Get moving and sign up today for Somerville Media Center's after school youth programs. 
For more information, find us on our website at somervillemedia.org. We've got to go to the guy from WGBH News. Create and capture holiday memories that last you a lifetime. Get moving and sign up today for Somerville Media Center's After School Year. So we're going to ask him what he thinks about the election. For more information, and, find us on our uh, website at somervillemedia.org. What kind of new turkeys is it they eat? Create and capture holiday memories that last you a lifetime. Get moving and sign up today for Somerville Media Center's after school youth programs. For more information, find us on our website at somervillemedia.org. Create and capture holiday memories that last you a lifetime. Get moving and sign up today for Somerville Media Center's after school youth programs. For more information, yes, find us there. on our website Fantastic. at somervillemedia.org. Hi. Hi. Here, we're about to leave, create uh, and capture out of holiday and memories that last you a lifetime. Uh, okay. Get moving and sign up today for Somerville Media Center's after school youth programs. For more information, find us on our website at somervillemedia.org. Create and capture holiday memories that last you a lifetime. Get moving and sign up today for Somerville Media Center's after school youth programs. For more information, find us on our website at somervillemedia.org. Create and capture holiday memories that last you a lifetime. Get moving and sign up today for Somerville Media Center's after school youth programs. For more information, and find us we're on our back. website at somervillemedia.org. Zooming into our news. Create and capture and we're back. Zooming into our newsroom is Peter Katzis, who is senior editor at WGBH News. Questions for five minutes. Include que Hi, sorry, I'm working too. <laughs> <laughs> what was the very first election story? How many reporters at WGBH today? Um, the first election story for this cycle? Uh, yeah. Oh, that would be back over a year ago when Michelle Wu declared that she was a candidate for mayor before then Mayor Marty Walsh was appointed U.S. Secretary of Labor. So if I'm looking a little tired tonight, it's because this has been a very long haul. Now, I should know for sure how many reporters we've cut out tonight, but reporters and editors, my, my guess is about 15. There are three people covering the Boston mayor's race and the city council race who are reporting directly to me. Um, but I'm also feeding the editors inside WGBH um, information that I pick up as we go along. Um, I'm working out of my kitchen in Jamaica Plain. You can see the famous family refrigerator in back of me. And I've been working out of my kitchen ever since the pandemic struck. Normally, um, most of us would be in the newsroom um, eating too much pizza <laughs> because that is the, uh, I, I think it's safe to say, um, pizza, which gets increasingly cold, is the um, universal meal for most election for most elections in most newsrooms. Um, I have another question. Um, what kind of election pizza will they get? Oh, you know, I'm a grumpy old guy. They'll probably get stuff with loads of vegetables on it. Um, that's my guess. There'll be a plain, there'll be a pepperoni, and then uh, all sorts of stuff with uh, a lot of vegetables. Um, I also have another question. Uh, do you have a prediction about Somerville's election? Like, I don't. And um, even if I did, I'd keep it to myself because um, the polls are still open. And I know this is a, a small, you know, a relatively small group. But um, in the news business, it's considered, you know, bad form to, on election day, make any sort of prediction before the polls close. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? 
Yes, it yeah. makes sense. Uh, annoying as it can be. You know, if you don't mind my butting in here for a second, we all hear a lot of criticism about the press these days, and I, I have to say a lot of it is warranted. But when it comes to things like elections, whether they're in Somerville or Boston or Massachusetts or around the United States, um, the media takes its responsibilities um, very seriously. And that's one reason, I don't mean to go national, but that, that's one reason why there's so much pushback in the press by Donald Trump claiming he won, because we've reported every story that gave him a chance of winning, and it never panned out. Even the Supreme, even the conservative U.S. Supreme Court agrees with the media, and these days that's something of a first. How long have you covered elections? Oh my word! Since I was thin and had a full head of hair and no beard, I've been in the business for forty-five plus years. So. It's probably safe to say, well, 40 years or so, state, local, and national. I've covered a couple of presidential elections, too. So I've, I've been in the business a long time. Uh, we're very happy you joined us today. Can we let you get back to work? Uh, sure. Do you have any other questions? Or I think that's it for tonight. I think that's Okay. It thanks an awful lot and uh good luck to you all thanks for having me thank you for your time bye bye that was peter katzis senior editor at wgdh news we have a moment uh with our friends from S sequestered story time Day. But in a lot of states, you can vote early this year. Things are a little more complicated this year because of the coronavirus. You really need a plan to vote. Plan to vote? Why do we need a plan? Figure out if you're going to vote in person or by mail. Switch. Or in okay. person early. Okay, switch. Switch. Something weird. I'm so short. 
Hello, I'm A.T. Let's go back to our list of who is up for election tonight. The entire school committee is being voted on in this election. Hello, I'm Nestor. Ward 1, Emily Ackman, is the only name on the ballot. She started representing Ward 1 in January 2018. She holds two master deg master's degrees and a, a PhD in education policy. And she is, she's on the board of of East Somerville Main Street, so since she's the only name on the ballot, she'll probably win. Hello, I'm Shiva. In War Two, Ilana Krepchin is only is the only lame name on the ballot. She's a what? Jewel. She's a jeweler and teaches jeweler making, jewelry making. According to the Somerville Schools website, she has a cat named Panda. Since she's the only name on the ballot, she'll probably win, not Panda. Panda is not on the ballot. Ward 3 has a contest. Sarah Phillips is running against Daniel O'Connell. Sarah Phillips first won election to the school committee in the last election in 2019. She received her Ph.D. in 2013 and has had many roles in education, including teaching English as a second language in the Oakland Public Schools. He is currently working for Keurig Dr. Pepper as a people analytics manager, but he was a former middle school teacher. Ward, Ward 4's Andre L. Green is the only name on the ballot. He is president of the school committee, school committee which means he, has, he was voted in as a leader by the other people on the school committee. He is the first person in his family to get a bachelor's degree, and because his name is the only one on the ballot, he's probably going to win. Laura Pitone. Um, Laura Pitone has re represented Ward 5 on the school committee since t 2014. She earned an engineering degree from MIT and a business degree from Bad Badson College and her and here hers is the only name on the ballot. So she's probably going to win. Eleanor Barish is a registered dietitian and she has a bachelor's degree in art history and Italian. She has been a school committee member since January 2020. Her name is the only one on the ballot for school committee in Ward 6, so she's probably going to win. Full disclosure, Eleanor Barish is a sustaining founder of the Somerville Media Center. Did you hear? There's a race in Ward 7. Sarah Dion is a school teacher, and Greg N N Nadu is, um, is an expert edu education consultant who has served as president of, of the Somerville Education Foundation. Both are on the ballot for a Ward 7 school committee. Do you know who also sits on the school committee? Our mayor. The next mayor will also be a member of our school committee. Um, to remind you, that's our race at. Oh, the top, that's the race at the top of the ballot tonight. Two city councilors will, two city councilors, Will Mba and Kantiana Ballin, Ball, Ballantyne. Let's look at the candidate candidates who have come through the Somerville Media Center this election season. How long has it been since we had a different... Good at reading. Uh, it's a little bit Hi everyone, my name is Tessa Bridge. My name is Beatriz Gomez Moacad, and I'm running for City Council in Ward 5. The Ward 5 City Council candidate. My name is Judy Pineda-Newfeld. My name is Becca Miller, and I'm running to be the next Ward 7 City Councilor. I'm a Mexican-American and Jewish woman, and the proud daughter of two immigrant for the last five years, I've called Somerville home and started to build a community here. Uh, I'm running because I believe that the power to make Somerville better is in the hands of regular people. Because I believe in Somerville. We have a choice in this election. Uh, and I'm excited to be part of a change we election in Somerville. My vision for Somerville is a city that's 
equitable yeah, and inclusive it. for all people in everything that our yeah. great city has to offer. This election will transform our community and we have an opportunity to build a Somerville that will work for all of us. And I am working to make sure that every resident feels the security, the dignity of safe, affordable housing. Thank you very much. Some of us was facing unprecedented challenges so long, in the pandemic that threaten our public health and economy, in your entire life, compounded by the long-term challenges of the climate crisis. Um, so My immigrant very, very experience has taught me to value differences. Yes. I'm an immigrant from Cameroon, and, and I know working, how it feels um, like you know, when you're working hard but barely getting by. I think that my role in Somerville has helped a lot of families. I'm looking forward to helping many more. And I got involved uh, running on a platform that was all about affordability, housing affordability, transparency in our local government, accountability, uh, both within that government and uh, for developers that had been running roughshod over our neighborhood here in Ward 2 for far too yep. long. Yes. That's, and that's I cool. want to start off yeah, by saying housing, 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 housing. Dealing that's with America's housing market. market. It's a it fundamental is, human right, and it is our obligation <laughs> as a society to find a way to provide accessible, quality, um, affordable housing to people who live here. Let's not mince words, right? The market has completely failed to provide housing at a reasonable cost for Somerville renters and homeowners. What do we need to do? We need to make sure that all voices are at the table. The people who are most affected uh, should be included in developing the policies. Uh, I'm a proponent of you know, supporting our small businesses. Don't doubt, you Thank know, you. ever since the pandemic started on the city council, I want to be clear that, you know, I am not opposed to development, but development that doesn't protect our residents and small businesses, maybe this is not the way you want to do your business. So I definitely agree with investing in housing and our climate goals, as folks have already stated, but I think it really depends Wait, on do we who we elect in this um, election this and thing, what goals they have, right? K My campaign has knocked thousands of doors, and I've personally spoken to hundreds of residents. In these okay. conversations, Kmart. Kmart. it is clear. Mm -hmm. Peace. Our neighbors yeah. are looking for courageous like leadership and bold like action to store. address their needs. Mm -hmm. We need to account with, with and represent and the underrepresented, and we need to be creative and have a vision. That's I'm excited to do that. Unlike my fellow candidates, I'm the only one in the race with actual experience working with yeah. The last 17 months, I've been to commemorate head of the Immigrant it. Services Unit under Somerville's COVID That's operations. Okay. Um, and I'm running on a really strong policy platform that centers the historically um, most impacted and tries to really craft a strong way out of this pandemic. So I really hope I can earn your vote in September and November. Will, you have said on your website that we need a Somerville Green New Deal. We have one. I wrote it. You voted for it in September 2019. Why are you saying we need one? Or why do we need one? I think it was limited in scope because it has no element of the, 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 the world gap wasn't there, racial justice wasn't there, I did not say anything about equality. So that is why my only Green New Deal will be a Green New Deal written, you know, by the people and for the people that are most impacted by climate change. We have an opportunity to transform our community here in Somerville, and I'm really excited to build a city that works for all of us, with many of the people on this stage and all of the voters who live in our beautiful and vibrant city. We face a potentially transformative juncture in this election this year. Um, and I got into this race yeah. knowing that. I got into it knowing that our city can do better Mba. when it comes to Mba. being affordable, Mba. accessible, Mba. and accountable Mba. to all of our residents. Mba. There is no uh, dominance of developer money, certainly in my bank account. And I, I assume that, that maybe that you have also returned all of your money. For this specific thing, question me on something else. <laughs> uh, there's no indication that uh, all your developers are going to be there. Uh, 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 so I've been fighting for accessibility, mm -hmm. equity, and affordability mm -hmm. since day one, even before a city council. We have an opportunity mm -hmm. now that we've been presented with these. Do we forget about these and move on with our lives as the pandemic eventually recedes? Or do we have the courage to go face these and take them on? You're, yeah. you're, you're taking the audience. And vote on November 2nd for me. On our trip. Create and capture holiday memories that right. last you a lifetime. Get moved. How long has it been since we had a different mayor in Somerville? Joe Curtitoni has been mayor of Somerville since 2013. Prior 2003. 
Apologies. Prior to that, he served as a member of the Board of Aldermen. Before they were called city councillors, the council was called Aldermen. Because there are now women who get elected to the office, it was decided that it wasn't right to call the people elected to the office Aldermen. Joe Cardoni had the same job, but we now call them call- councillors. Joe Cardoni um, was elected in 2003. At 38, he was the second youngest mayor in Somerville history. He has been mayor in Somerville longer than any other mayors in Somerville. The city has changed a lot. Joker Tatoni, since Joker Tatoni has been mayor, or when, Assembly Square has gone from a Kmart with a very big parking lot to a, spa- to a place with offices and Legoland and apartments and a movie theater. It used to be the Orange Line. Did not stop in Somerville. Now we have the Assembly Row T stop. The city has built lots of new schools, including the Argenziano School and the Somerville High School. We invited Mayor Cardotoni to join us tonight, but his office did not respond. There are still seconds to vote. If there are, if there are other kids watching this broadcast, we have a message for you. Roll tape. Super important, especially okay, this year. What is, it? what is that? Looks like. We know you children are so sweet, but now's the time to turn up the. It's almost voting day inside the USA. If your parents have no plan to vote, here's what we say. Annoy your parents until they vote. It's time to scream and whine until we have sore throats. election day here in America, and everyone over 18 needs to vote. Your parents probably say they're too busy, but honestly, how many times a day do you see them checking Facebook? So, next time your parents say they don't have a plan to vote, here's what we'll do. Annoy your parents until they vote. It's time to scream and whine until or throw it's time to misbehave to save the USA it's time to irritate until election day it's time to kick their shins until
especially this year. Good evening. I'm Sebastian, if you've, and you've just joined the Somerville Media Center's youth program special election night broadcast. I'm Kai, and the polls have closed. Let's turn to Namu Sampath of Wicked Local and Somerville Journal. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's really nice to meet you. Thank you for having me on. Um, I was just going to talk to you about covering the election. Um, this is actually my first big election that I've um, ever covered. Uh, I just graduated from Boston University in May, um, and I've only been working in this job for five months, so I'm really grateful that I've been able to uh, cover such a vibrant community. Um, and today's election, obviously, um, as the kids just mentioned, uh, the polls just closed at 8, so three minutes ago. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm excited to see what the results are when they come in later tonight. Um, and I guess if you have any questions for me, I can answer them or talk to you about my day today. It was really busy. I've been working since like 7 a.m., but I'm open to any questions you have. Okay, so I have a question. Mm -hmm. I want to know, do you have any like funny or comically entertaining stories you could share with us that you've experienced during uh, in your career? Um, you mean like over the last five months or just today? In general? Oh, over the last five months, not just today. That'll be crazy. Okay, let me think. Um, I think one of them. Oh, I don't know if it's funny. It's more fun than funny, I think. But I have been covering um, a lot of food-related stories um, in the last few months, especially during the summer. Um, and there was the Taste of Food event. Um, I don't know if you or your families like went to the restaurants during the summer and like got little tickets with like you know the restaurants and you like tried out different foods. But um, I got to talk to a bunch of restaurant owners who like participated in that um, event, and they really. Um, appreciated the business that came to them. Um, another fun one, I think, is one of my favorite restaurants in Somerville is Himalayan Kitchen um, in Union Square. And I interviewed their one of their owners. Um, and he's really, really a great guy. And I had a lot of fun um, talking to him and his family and, you know, why they, like, have their restaurant. And, you know, the, the business that they have is really great. Um, and the food is so good. Definitely recommend going there. But yeah, those are the two top ones that are coming to mind. What has been your favorite story that you've covered so far? My favorite story? Hmm. That's a really hard question. I think all of them are really important. I definitely think the the one I was just mentioning about the Himalayan kitchen was one of my top three for sure. I can't think of what the other two are, but definitely my top three. Um, it was just really interesting. Um, again, to hear from the to hear from the owner as well, from his family, and you know, just eat some good food and celebrate a great restaurant. So, um, I have another question for you. Um, mm -hmm. Is writing about like um, is writing about an election difficult um, anyway? Yeah, so uh, just background before I answer your question. Um, my paper is a weekly paper, meaning that every deadline I have is the week after it starts. So let's say like Monday, I'll start writing a story. The next Monday is its deadline. And so with an election, the hard part is that all the stories are due on the day that the election is. So all my stories today are due by the end of today. Um, and they're really super fast paced. I've never really done that even in college I never really had that experience so it's really been a learning curve and I've learned a lot um but you know it, you just kind of have to shove stories out there and hope for the best um and that's what I've been doing all day today so hopefully it's good but yeah um I have another question it's, a, it's just a question about what is your opinion on Somerville in the first place? What was the last part of your question? Sorry. Uh, I want to ask, 
what is your opinion? What 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 do you what do you what do you like about Somerville? Oh, my opinion on Somerville. I love Somerville. I'm actually originally from California, so Somerville reminds me a lot of home in in, in a weird way. Um, it's very vibrant. Um, there's so many communities who um, are important to the city and who um, who add a sense of life, I guess, more like cultural vibes or, you know, like an, they add like an essence to the city, which I really appreciate. Um, the other thing is, is it's very big and there's so many people who are so active in a lot of various parts of the city. So like transportation, there's like a huge um, like advocacy or like volunteering in terms of like transportation groups and stuff like that. But then there's also people who are super passionate about like politics and you know they do their thing and it's really cool to watch and like over the last five months especially like joining right in the middle of an election season is it was really hard for me to like get the ropes and learn all the people and all the faces and everything um but yeah now that we're you know at the end of the year almost and just seeing like how the city has transformed i guess in the last five months i've been here um it's been like it's been my pleasure i guess to learn all about the city I think it's really cool that if you're from here, I think it's really cool that you're from here. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, uh, I have one one more question. Uh, mm -hmm. When when do you think the results um, uh, will be in for tonight's election? So I believe they'll be in around 9.30, but I think those will be unofficial um, election results. I think officially they'll be in probably by tomorrow morning. I could be wrong, but I think that's what it is. Uh, thank you, um, Namu Sampath um, of the mm -hmm. Somerville Journal. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We have some fools of our own. If you go to somervillemedia.org, you can see we have the following that anyone can vote on. Would you rather have the power of invisibility or flight? Would you rather have a time machine or a teleportal? Be breakfast or dinner? Dogs or cats? Vote now and we'll have the results when the polls close at 8 p.m. We have a few minutes before the polls close, so let's talk about how Somerville is organized. And this is going to involve some math. If you're in Somerville schools, you should be able to do this in your head. Somerville is cut up to, into seven wards. Each ward has three pre precincts. Ward 1 has Precinct 1, Precinct 2, and Precinct 3. When you multiply 7 wards times 3 precincts, precincts, you get 21 precincts. That's how many places will report back once the polls close at 8 p.m. tonight. That's why we won't know um, the results right at 8 p.m. Now we have 21 precincts and three poll workers from the city. How many volunteers do you have? That's 80, uh, 63 poll workers in the city of Somerville. Enough math. The polls are closed. Let's run through who is on the ballot. For mayor, we have Willem Baugh and Katiana Ballantyne. For counselor at large, we have Kristen Strezzo, Willie Burnley Jr., Virginia Hussey, Charlotte Kelly, Justin Kokoda, Tracy Leah P Pratt, Eve Sychik and Jake Wilson. For council, the following ca candidates are incumbents and unopposed. That means they're already in office and looking for a new term. Those who do not have an opponent are, in Ward 1, Matt McLaughlin is on the ballot. In Ward 3, Ben Ellen Campen is on the ballot. In Ward 4, Jesse Klingman is, on, is the only person on the ballot for counselor. And in Ward 6, Lance Davis is the only counselor on the ballot. In Ward 2, voters are choosing between J.T. Scott, the incumbent, and Stefanson Ammon, the challenger. In Ward 5, there is an open seat between Mark Niedergang, Niedergang uh, is stepping down from the council, where Beatrice um, Gomez is running against Tessa Bridge. In West Somerville, there is a Ward 7 race for an open seat. Mary Jo Rossetti is stepping down from the council, so Judy Pinuda Ninefield is on the ballot against Becca Miller. For school committee, 
In Ward 1, Emily Ekman is the only name on the ballot. In Ward 2, um, Alana Krepchen is the only name on the ballot. Ward 3 has a contest. Sarah Phillips is running against Daniel O'Connell. In Ward 4, Andre L. Green is the only name on the ballot. In Ward 5, Laura Patone is the only name on the ballot. In Ward 6, once again, Eleanor Barish is the only name on the ballot. There's a race in Ward 7. Ooh. Greg, Nad Greg Nadeau is running against Sarah Dion. So, uh, why are there so few, so few people running for school committee in Sarville, do you think? Um, I'm actually not sure. I mean, hmm. COVID? COVID. Uh, COVID is the answer to a lot of things. Well, I think I'm, I find that a bit hard to, uh, like really pinpoint on the spot myself, but maybe it's something to a little bit mix of COVID and yeah, mostly COVID. It's all a symptom of COVID, the mess of scheduling, the scheduling and all, um, all the symptoms that COVID has caused. Yeah, it's, because they're like, you know, like, I don't know, over like a hundred people in most schools. So yeah, definitely COVID is a thing. Yeah, that exists. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, let's take one more look at the candidates who came through the Somerville Media Center. Roll tape. Bye. Hi everyone, my name is Tessa Bridge. My name is Beatriz Gomez Moacad, and I'm running for City Council in Ward 5. The Ward 5 City Council candidate. My name is Judy Pineda Neufeld. My name is Becca Miller, and I'm running to be the next Ward 7 City Councilor. I'm a Mexican American and Jewish woman, and the proud daughter of two immigrant parents. For the last five years, I've called Somerville home and started to build a community here. Uh, I'm running because I believe that the power to make Somerville better is in the hands of regular people because I believe in Somerville. We have a choice in this election. Uh, and I'm excited to be part of a change election in Somerville. My vision for Somerville is a city that's equitable and inclusive for all people in everything that our great city has to offer. This election will transform our community and we have an opportunity to build a Somerville that'll work for all of us. And I am working to make sure that every resident feels the security, the dignity of safe, affordable housing. Somerville is facing unprecedented challenges in the pandemic that threaten our public health and economy, compounded by the long-term challenges of the climate crisis. My immigrant experience has taught me to value differences. I'm an immigrant from Cameroon, and I know how it feels like you know, when you're walking, how the belly getting by. I think that my role in Somerville has helped a lot of families. I'm looking forward to helping many more. And I got involved uh, running on a platform it was all about affordability, housing affordability, transparency in our local government, accountability, uh, both within that government and uh, for developers that had been running roughshod over our neighborhood here in Ward 2 for far too long. And I want to start off by saying housing. 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 That's America's housing market. Housing is a fundamental human right, and it is our obligation as a society to find a way to provide accessible, quality, um, affordable housing to people who live here. Let's not mince words, right? The market has completely failed to provide housing at a reasonable cost for Somerville renters and homeowners. What do we need to do? We need to make sure that all voices are at the table. The people who are most affected uh, should be included in developing the policies. Uh, I'm a proponent, you know, of supporting our small businesses. We've done that, you know, ever since the pandemic started on the city council. I want to be clear that, you know, I am not opposed to development, but development that doesn't protect our residents and small businesses, maybe this is not the way you want to do your business. So I definitely agree with investing in housing and our climate goals, as folks have already stated, but I think it really depends on who we elect in this um, election and what goals that they have, right? My campaign has knocked thousands of doors and I have personally spoken to hundreds of residents. In these conversations, it is clear. 
Our neighbors are looking for courageous leadership and bold action to address their needs. We need to account and represent the underrepresented, and we need to be creative and have a vision. That's, I'm excited to do that. Unlike my fellow candidates, I'm the only one in the race with actual experience working in city government. The last 17 months, I've been ahead of the Immigrant Services Unit under Somerville's COVID operations. Um, and I'm running on a really strong policy platform that centers the historically um, most impacted and tries to really craft a strong way out of this pandemic. So I really hope I can earn your vote in September and November. Will, you have said on your website that we need a Somerville Green New Deal. We have one. I wrote it. You voted for it in September of 2019. Why are you saying we need a new one? Or why do we need one? I think it was limited in scope because it has no element of the, 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 the world gap wasn't there, racial justice wasn't there, I did not say anything about ecology. So that is why my own new Green New Deal will be a Green New Deal written, you know, by the people and for the people that are most impacted by climate change. We have an opportunity to transform our community here in Somerville, and I'm really excited to build a city that works for all of us with many of the people on this stage and all of the voters who live in our beautiful and vibrant city. We face a potentially transformative juncture in this election this year. Um, and I got into this race knowing that. I got into it knowing that our city can do better when it comes to being affordable, accessible, and accountable to all of our residents. There is no um, dominance of developer money, certainly in my bank account. And I assume that maybe you haven't also returned all of your money because according to your OCPF reports, uh, there's no indication that uh, all your development money has been returned. So I've been fighting for accessibility, equity, and affordability since day one, even before a city councilor. We have an opportunity now. Now that we've been presented with these, do we forget about these and move on with our lives as the pandemic eventually recedes? Or do we have the courage to go face these and take them on? And vote on November 2nd for me. Hello, we are just now receiving the um, poll, result, poll results um, for the straw poll that we ran. The flight versus invisibility poll. Uh, what would you like to? Mm. I'll probably choose flight. You can get places faster. Yeah, honestly, flights. I don't know. Invisibility. The only thing, like, hey, where where Nestor go? Huh. Meanwhile, flight, you can, like, travel, like, from wherever you live to, I don't know, Japan in, like, a few, like, what, a few minutes, an hour or so. Yeah, and plus, like, I feel like invisibility doesn't have as many pros as flight. Like, for example, I can get behind invisibility if you were to say, like, oh, if I could sneak into this place or if I could go to this place, like, and be invisible and stuff like that. But even then, you wouldn't have, like full transportation ability um, as much as you would have with yeah, you're flight. Just, you're just, you're almost just an average Joe. You just can't be seen. I will say that flight would possibly get you captured. Or killed. You can become one of those geese that get caught into like, jet lines. Oh god. <laughs> and then you give the airline itself just a, new, a fresh new paint, a coat of red paint. And other stuff. <laughs> Human hair. 
<laughs> Invisibility would also be really cool. You could just sneak around. But yeah, yeah flight is a bit better. I don't know if you could also get killed by being invisible. It appears that we have the results of the straw poll from all of you. 60% of you chose to go with flight, and 40% and of you chose to be invisible. Also good choice. And the next poll question that we had um, was, what would you like to own, a time machine or a teleporter? Teleporter, time machines, way like time machine, time travel in general has way too many rules and too many negatives. Like, oh, I stepped on a leaf. I guess my family's dead. Oh, hey, I'm gone. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. A teleporter would be cool, but if we're going off of the last uh, poll, if I already have flight, then why would I need to teleport? I, and plus, like with time machines, I feel like you could go to any era. Like, for example, I would be able to meet my grandfathers i would be able to meet like ancient ancestors that i didn't even know i had and stuff like that you know logistically time travel rules wise you'd also mess up a lot in the space time continuum True. plus yeah i'm sorry go on yeah i feel like i feel like there's a movie once um where they get stuck back to the future i think they get stuck in the past or something like that I'm afraid that would happen, but a teleporter would be much better because I'm always late for everything. So if I'm just late for my class, like one minute left, I'm just gonna like get my stuff and then teleport to where I wanna go. So I feel like that would be a bit more convenient for me, but. Yeah, so it appears that we have received our results for the time machine versus teleporter poll. Um, teleporter received 85% of votes and Time Machine received 15% of votes. Good choice on both parts. And so the next one that we have was dinner versus breakfast. Hmm. I think- That's harder to answer than the rest. I think personally I would choose dinner just because I don't really eat breakfast and for breakfast since i'm like a very picky person the only thing that i eat is cocoa pebbles not not <laughs> even just so cereal in general no no just i'll just have the island. cocoa pebbles please yeah so like i don't know and plus with dinner you could have like steak you could have mac and cheese you could have spaghetti you could have pizza you could have like so many other choices yeah just being restricted what yeah. I, what i eat for breakfast is like i go into the fridge and like oh yesterday's meatballs or something i just eat anything but people say breakfast is like more important than dinner it's like the most important meal yeah, yeah. I, guess, I guess i can understand that one dinner me and my brother take like two hours to choose what we're gonna have for dinner for breakfast i just take a box of cereal so yeah i feel like it two hours that's an over exam I'm, I'm exaggerating, but we no, take no, 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 a very no, 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 long time. That is fact. Two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Two hours. Yeah. Anyway. And so it seems like we have also received the results for dinner versus breakfast. Uh, dinner received 70% of our vote, oh. which was great. And breakfast received 30%, which was also great. Good job on both of your parts. Um, and next up, we have dogs versus cats, a very controversial debate. Cats. <laughs> okay, no, cats. Anything else is wrong? Okay. I what are those? No, it's cats. Right answer. Wow, you're just going to forget about my dog? I just... It's a dog. <laughs> you don't... No, it's cats. That's cats all nice. the way. Okay, that's nice. So, um, I would have to go undecided just because I have a dog. His name is Feeny. He is a little Boston Terrier. Um, and he is insane, and I love him, and he's great. But I also love cat sitting. Um, I have a very funny story with cat sitting. Um, one time, I accidentally left the catnip on the counter, <laughs> and the cats got the catnip, and they <laughs> and it fell all over the ground, and the cats went insane, and it was great, and I loved it. <laughs> I. Uh... Okay, whoa. That's very relatable. 
I guess I'll just have to report you to the police. I'll be, I'll be back in a few. I still received my cookies, so it's fine. Oh, you got paid in cookies? I got paid in cookies. <laughs> not, not money. Not, no. not, you don't get any money for dropping the cat. Maybe I got you cookies. Got cookies, for dropping cookies are good. I love cookies. Um, I have a lot of cats, but I also love dogs. I like every animal, but humans. I'm kidding. Um, but... I feel like dogs are harder to to take care of than cats. Mm -hmm. Cats, you know, you need to take dogs on walks. They bark a lot. They're loud. They're mostly extremely big and stuff. But, you know, cats are a bit easier, but I still can't decide. And I have a story like that. We went to New Hampshire for a few days, and then somehow my cat, like, took the treat bag out and then made the biggest hole in it. And then I just saw a few crumbs on the floor and I'm like what's that and then I smell the catnip it's just on the table and they're like hello oh god <laughs> is it with both of you a catnip <laughs> I <laughs> it's not my fault my cat has thumbs okay <laughs> I'm just not gonna question that one and for the sake of my sanity let's just move on to my response yes cats <laughs> uh but no in all seriousness I just prefer cats in general but that's all. I, I don't have much to say about that. On to your results. Dogs versus cats. 75% of you guys chose the wrong answer. Dogs. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> um, and 25% of you, I will buy you a Kit Kat. Because you chose cats. Um, and we are currently still waiting for um, election results from the city of Somerville. But um, let's talk about what we want to see from our um, from the people running for the election, um, and yeah, what changes we would like to see. Um, I think for starters, I think that um, possibly opening up more stuff. I understand that a lot of stuff are like already open. Okay, donuts. But um, there's still like. I don't know. I feel like there's still a lot of restrictions. And um, for those who don't want to get vaccinated, I feel really bad for them. Both, I mean, I understand, like, why they wouldn't want to get vaccinated for, like, religious beliefs and stuff like that. Um, but I also, I'm one of the people that believe that you should get vaccinated. But even then, if you're not, um, you have so many, like, so limited ability to go to stuff. You can't go to restaurants. You can't go in a store. You can't do after school activities if your parents decided that you shouldn't get vaccinated and just stuff like that. Like, I understand the safety rule, um, but I just, yeah, I think limitations should. Yeah, I agree. Um, and a few days ago, I have no idea when it. Um, people were going really fast by my street and they put a few p- speed bumps and I'm happy about that you know it's good one person like it's a not a great thing but one person there was like a I think an accident near where I live because people were going too fast so it's good to put speed bumps places speaking of vaccinations um, you all probably already know this but like ten, I think like 10 year olds are going to be able to get vaccinated now so yeah um another thing that i would like to add about like the streets i've seen a lot of like weird traffic stuff like on um near mudville um like close to the high school there's like a bunch of like traffic that's always so like mixed up um like for example um this one time um this one time i saw like this street in the middle of the road wanting to move but the other ones wouldn't let it and stuff like that um so yeah i just wish that that would be changed like um changing like uh the way that street lights uh, organize themselves possibly having more um control over like how cars uh work on the road yeah i've been seeing a lot of changes on the roads so it's it's good Hopefully. it appears that we have the re- a result from the mba campaign Will Mba has conceded. Katiana Ballantyne will be the next mayor of Somerville. Nice. Um, 
Um, and so, um, you know, let's discuss some more. Like, what do we want from the mayor of Somerville, um, mm. who is now Katiana Valentine? Um, I think for starters, I want more. I feel like Somerville is a very diverse communi- uh, commu- community. And although there's already like a lot of set into place, and I feel like like teachers and stuff are already like doing their utmost best to try and make everybody like included in society, I still feel that um, I still feel that like LGBTQ plus students and stuff like people who are Muslim or of like Arabic backgrounds don't really get represented that often um and i feel like there should be something in place to control the amount of discrimination that they face from their like fellow classmates um and so possibly like putting it something in uh would be very very like important to me and so many other lives <laughs> yeah that, that would be good um I'm not good with this stuff, so yeah, me I, ca- so I can't say anything. But um, Moving on from that, to repeat, Katiana Valentine has been elected the next mayor of Somerville. She will be taking office in January. Let's go to the tapes of the candidates. Hi everyone, my name is Tessa Bridge. My name is Beatriz Gomez Moacad, and I'm running for City Council in Ward 5. The Ward 5 City Council candidate. My name is Judy Pineda Neufeld. My name is Becca Miller, and I'm running to be the next Ward 7 City Councilor. I'm a Mexican American and Jewish woman, and the proud daughter of two immigrant parents. For the last five years, I've called Somerville home and started to build a community here. Uh, I'm running because I believe that the power to make Somerville better is in the hands of regular people because I believe in Somerville. We have a choice in this election. Uh, And I'm excited to be part of a change election in Somerville. My vision for Somerville is a city that's equitable and inclusive for all people in everything that our great city has to offer. This election will transform our community and we have an opportunity to build a Somerville that'll work for all of us. And I am working to make sure that every resident feels the security, the dignity of safe, affordable housing. Somerville is facing unprecedented challenges in the pandemic that threaten our public health and economy, compounded by the long-term challenges of the climate crisis. My immigrant experience has taught me to value differences. I'm an immigrant from Cameroon, and I know how it feels like you know, when you're working hard but barely getting by. I think that my role in Somerville has helped a lot of families. I'm looking forward to helping many more. And I got involved uh, running on a platform It was all about affordability, housing affordability, transparency in our local government, accountability, uh, both within that government and uh, for developers that had been running roughshod over our neighborhood here in Ward 2 for far too long. And I want to start off by saying housing. 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 That's America's housing market. Housing is a fundamental human right, and it is our obligation as a society to find a way to provide accessible, quality, um, affordable housing to people who live here. Let's not mince words, right? The market has completely failed to provide housing at a reasonable cost for Somerville renters and homeowners. What do we need to do? We need to make sure that all voices are at the table. The people who are most affected uh, should be included in developing the policies. Uh, I'm a proponent, you know, of supporting a small business. And we've done that, you know, ever since the pandemic started on the city council. I want to be clear that, you know, I am not opposed to development, but development that doesn't protect our residents and small businesses, maybe this is not the way you want to do your business. So I definitely agree with investing in housing and our climate goals, as folks have already stated, but I think it really depends on who we elect in this um, election and what goals that they have, right? My campaign has knocked thousands of doors and I have personally spoken to hundreds of residents. In these conversations, it is clear. 
Our neighbors are looking for courageous leadership and bold action to address their needs. We need to account and represent the underrepresented, and we need to be creative and have a vision. That's, I'm excited to do that. Unlike my fellow candidates, I'm the only one in the race with actual experience working in city government. The last 17 months, I've been ahead of the Immigrant Services Unit under Somerville's COVID operations. Um, and I'm running on a really strong policy platform that centers the historically um, most impacted and tries to really craft a strong way out of this pandemic. So I really hope I can earn your vote in September and November. Will, you have said on your website that we need a Somerville Green New Deal. We have one. I wrote it. You voted for it in September of 2019. Why are you saying we need a new one? Or why do we need one? I think it was limited in scope because it has no element of the, 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 the world gap wasn't there, racial justice wasn't there, I did not say anything about ecology. So that is why my own new Green New Deal will be a Green New Deal meeting, you know, by the people and for the people that are most impacted by climate change. We have an opportunity to transform our community here in Somerville, and I'm really excited to build a city that works for all of us, with many of the people on this stage, and all of the voters who live in our beautiful and vibrant city. We face a potentially transformative juncture in this election this year. Um, and I got into this race knowing that. I got into it knowing that our city can do better when it comes to being affordable, accessible, and accountable to all of our residents. There is no um, dominance of developer money, certainly in my bank account. And I assume that maybe you haven't also returned all of your money because according to your OCPF reports, uh, there's no indication that uh, all your developer money has been returned. So I've been fighting for accessibility, equity, and affordability since day one, even before a city council. We have an opportunity now. Now that we've been presented with these, do we forget about these and move on with our lives as the pandemic eventually recedes? Or do we have the courage to go face these and take them on? And vote on November 2nd for me. Um, and we're, oh, Kai, where are you? Where is he? Ah, oh, there you are. Good morning, Peter Bus. And we're back, and, but it's getting close to our bedtimes, I'm afraid to say. Um, SCAT Channel 3 will post results um, as they happen. This has been the Youth Program Election Special. Good night. <laughs> Do ba 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 do ba